Welcome to part 4 of Let's Play Return to Firetop Mountain by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 90, and I was about to decide whether to peruse some of the Inquisitor's books and turn to 18, or walk through the cavern and into the tunnel at the far end and turn to 337. Um, we're going to peruse some of his books, so we're going to turn to 18. Here we go. There we are. You discover many strange titles on the bookshelves. Casket of Souls, Transmutation, The Dark Light and Vampire Blood are just a few. But the one that, uh, but the one that catches your attention is a tiny leather bound book entitled Eye of the Dragon. You open it at random, but the print is too small to read. If you have a magnifying glass and wish to read the book, turn to 53. If you would rather read Vampire Blood, turn to 290. Okay, do we have a magnifying glass? Let's have a look. Yep, there it is. Uh, we have a mirror magnifying glass. I don't know if... I can't remember if that's one thing or whether I just missed out the... or whether I missed out the, uh, the comma. I think it's one thing because I remember I got four things from the... Uh, yeah, and I picked up four things. One, two, three, and four. The healing balm was one of them. So I think that's uh, that's one thing, but... Yeah, but it says mirror magnifying glass, that's a type of magnifying glass, so um, I dare say we can use it. Okay, so we're going to read the book and turn to 53. I really wish they wouldn't make these books mildly ambiguous. You know, um, I wish they were, you know, that um, it was definite. Uh, yeah, that's what I like, definite answers. Okay, you turn to the chapter called Dragon's Teeth and scan the page with the magnifying glass until you reach a section on the elementals of light and chaos. You read that there are four of each, now the supreme elementals of light appearing in the form of golden dragon's teeth. Um, each one is numbered. The air elemental of light is number 186 and destroys a water elemental of chaos. The earth elemental of light is, but the next three pages are missing from the book, and you do not learn the secrets of the other elementals. You memorize the information about the air, e about the air elemental before walking through the cavern and into the tunnel at the far end. Okay, so air elemental of light, let's write that down, 186, destroys water elemental, right? <coughs> okay, air, whoops, air elemental of light. 186 destroys water elemental of chaos. Done. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, and turn to 337. I will just say that, um, again, it's really hot and humid today, so I have a fan on. If you can hear that, uh, then I apologise, but I I can't turn it off because it's just too uncomfortable. Um, also, yesterday, I completed, uh, really easily, um, Alex Kidd, The Lost Stars. Um, uh, uh, there are two words that can be used to describe that game, um, and, um, and they are extremely and easy. I mean, seriously, that... <sighs> That game is just really simple, and um, I think I'll do a video of it. It, it, it is just criminally easy. It's just, uh, I don't understand how it's supposed to be a challenge. I mean, uh, there's even infinite infinite continues. I mean, anyway, enough of that. All right, so uh, we're going to 337, weren't we? Yeah, so, uh, so I'll do a video of that at some point. Yeah, on a Sega Mar system, by the way. Um, the only Alex Kid, uh, the only Alex Kid game I've done so far is Alex Kid in Shinobi World, and that's because that's my favourite. And um, people rave and rave about Alex Kid in Miracle World, but I really, I've never really been into that game as much. On the Mar System forum, the SMS Tributes forum, there was a poll of the best game, you know, like rounds, and of course I voted for Populous every time because that is the best game. And, uh, and and of course, naturally, Alex Kidd in Miracle World won. I mean, if you if you take the nostalgia out of it, you know, uh, uh, like I have, because I first played that game in about 2005. I'd never played it before then. Um, it was built into 
Um, the first incarnation of the Master System 2 had Alex Kidd and Miracle World built in, even though the game came out in 1986 or 87 or something. I think it's 86. Uh, I could be wrong, though. Um, and then afterwards, um, the second incarnation of the Master System 2 had Sonic the Hedgehog built in, and that was the first Master System that I got, um, or rather my family got, and so that's why that's a nostalgic game for me. Uh, but yeah, the first Master System 2 had Alex Kidd and Miracle World built in. I mean, the Master Systems, the Master System ones had, you know, uh, they had other games like uh, Hang On and Safari Hunt built in, those sort of things. But the Master System 2, the first one, had Alex Kidd and Miracle World built in. So it's very nostalgic to people. It was their first game, as it were. Um, and that must be the reason why people think it's good, because in my opinion, it's an average platformer. It's it, it, um, I also find it mildly too difficult and uh, quite frustrating. It's one of those games where you die first time from getting hit. It's one of those annoying games like Captain Silver. But I think Captain Silver does it well because once you practice at Captain Silver, it gets easier. Whereas Alex Kidd in Miracle World, because um, some of the levels go really fast and, and it still catches me out sometimes, even though I've played it a fair few times. But there's no nostalgic value to it for me because... I didn't play it until 2005, uh, so I think it must have won the, the, uh, the competition, as it were, because of nostalgia, because in my opinion it just isn't a good game, but I will do a video of it eventually, but I'll have to practice at it, but Alex Kidd The Lost Stars is extremely easy. There's, I mean, the only real sequel to Alex Kidd in Miracle World, really, I mean, Alex Kidd in Shinobi World isn't really a sequel, that's just a um, parody game. Alex Kidd High Tech World was never meant to be an Alex Kidd game. It's just Alex Kidd marketed. It was just an Alex, an Alex Kidd game marketed for Europe and America. And Alex Kidd The Lost Stars is just an arcade sort of arcadey platformer, really. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, but Alex Kidd, um, uh, yeah, Alex Kidd High Tech World was was marketed as a. It wasn't originally an Alex Kidd game, and there's Alex Kidd, the, en uh, the Enchanted Castle, in the Enchanted Castle for Mega Drive slash Genesis, and I've never played that, but um, I'll give it a go at some point. But yeah, I'm, I'm not really into Alex Kidd, really. I mean, you know, as other fans of the system are, but that's just me. Anyway, enough of that. Um... The tunnel ends at the solid wall, which, however, slides to one side as you approach it. You enter a large room, and the wall slides back into place behind you. The room is lit by four candles standing at the four corners of a wooden table in the middle of the room. A polished breastplate lies on the table. If you wish to put the breastplate on, turn to 317. If you would rather open the door in the opposite wall, turn to 170. Uh, we're going to put the breastplate on, so turn to 317. It's not too far away, so we'll just scroll to it, rather than using the scroll bar. There we go. Um, you examine the breastplate carefully. Um, ever mindful of traps and evil magic, but it looks perfectly normal, so you put it on. It is extremely well crafted and will help to protect you. Regain one skill point and one luck point. Uh, seeing nothing else of interest, you open the door in the far wall. Turn to 170. Okay, we don't need the skill point, and we do need the luck point, so let's put our luck back up to maximum. Good. Which is from 10 to 11, which is our maximum. Okay, brilliant. So, turn to 170. Oh, I'll just put down that I have a breastplate as well, of course. Breastplate. Whoops. There we go. Still... Yeah, I keep thinking there's a bigger gap there, but there isn't, it's just how it is. Anyway, um... I can't remember which... Oh, I can't remember which, which page I was on now. Well, I was on 337, so let's go there. I hate it when I do that. Oh yeah, 317, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, 270. I shouldn't have moved and then started to do the... write that in. Yes, 170. I, I apologise for that. I have a really sometimes my a really short-term memory is extremely bad. Something I've uh, read like a couple of seconds ago, I can easily forget. But my long-term memory is really, really good. I can remember stuff from years ago with with uh, yeah, with really good clarity. It's it's quite bizarre. Anyway, uh, the door opens into into another tunnel, and after 20 meters, you come to a door in the right-hand wall. Uh, you can hear great gusts of laughter coming from the other side of the door. 
You you try the handle, but it will not turn. If you want to knock on the door, turn to 187. If you'd rather walk on, turn to 304. Okay, we're going to knock on the door, so turn to 187. Uh, a small hatch slides open in the middle of the door, and you see a pair of big eyes staring at you. What's the password? A voice demands. Will you answer? Zagor, turn to 83. Um, arrow, turn to 204, or chaos, turn to 300. Uh, we're going to answer. Uh, we're going to answer arrow. Is there any clue for this? Before I do this. No, no, there isn't. Oh, wait a minute. Piece of slate. Piece of slate arrow. That must have something to do with it. But all I have written down in my notes um, is just to say arrow. But that must be the reason. Piece of slate. That is arrow. I don't know why that's a clue, but you know, 204. Uh, I suppose you might find out. Anyway, we're going to say arrow. Uh, the door opens, and you are greeted by a small creature with large ears and a long nose. It's another troglodyte. He is flanked by two lizard men guards. He looks you up and down appraisingly and says, "No one told me any humans were entering the sheep's eye-eating competition. Anyway, no matter. Follow me." If you wish to tell... Uh, um, I might have said that wrong, I'll say it again. No one told me any humans were entering the sheep's eye-eating competition. Anyway, no matter. Follow me. Uh, there, there you are, that's a bit better. If you wish to tell the troglodyte that there has been some mistake and, and that you are not entered for the sheep's eye-eating competition, turn to 156. If you, if you prefer to follow the troglodyte in silence, turn to 43. Uh, we're going to follow the troglodyte in silence. It's best not to uh, give the game away. So turn to 43. Um, it might insult him or something, saying, "How dare you not want to enter the sheep's eye eating competition?" Which is completely, completely and utterly revolting. Okay, you are conducted to a table set up in the middle of a large room, around which th three contestants are sitting, uh, each with a plate of sheep's eyeballs piled high in front of him. You sit down to join them and gulp at the sight of the eyeballs in front of you. Uh, you look at the others and try to raise a smile. Your opponent to the left is an old barbarian wearing furs and a leather headband. Isn't he a human, though? Isn't a barbarian a human? But the troglodyte just said he didn't know any other humans were entering. Oh, I don't know, who cares? Uh, your opponent to the left is an old barbarian wearing furs and a leather headband. The one to your right is a, ne uh, a Neanderthal-looking caveman. And the other one sitting opposite you is another troglodyte who, although of small build, has a pot belly, and everyone knows that sheep's eyes are a troglodyte delicacy. The barbarian looks at you fiercely and asks in a gruff voice, Do you want a side bet on this? If you want to have a bet with the barbarian on the outcome of the competition, turn to 268. If you don't want to bet, turn to 280. And we're going to have a bet with him. Why not? Turn to 268. Even though gambling is immoral, but anyway, well, I think it's immoral anyway. Always have done, always will. Um, I only bet gold against gold, the barbarian continues. No gold, no bet. If you have something made of gold that you are willing to bet with, turn to 326. If you, if you do not have a golden object with which to bet, you must tell the barbarian that you don't want to bet after all. Turn to 380. Okay, we do have something made of gold because we have some gold coins there. And we also have four Zagor coins, so yes we do. Turn to 326. What's that? Oh, uh, oh yeah, that thing with the bloke about to be eaten by ants. Yeah. Um, you are instructed that on the count of three, you must start eating, the winner being the contestant to eat the greatest number of eyeballs in five minutes. You pick one up, ready to begin, but the cold and slimy texture of a raw eyeball makes you feel quite sick. Uh, then you hear the countdown. One, two, three, go! You shut your eyes and pop the eyeball in your mouth. Uh, to decide who eats the most eyeballs, roll one die five times for each of the contestants, including... Yeah, yourself. Yeah, that's a good use of yourself because you're rolling a you're rolling a die for yourself. It's reflexively, you see, including yourself.
Although really, the including might preclude the reflexivity, reflexiveness of it. Let me let me read it again. To decide which one is going to roll one die uh, for the, each of the contestants. Now I think that should actually be including you, uh, uh, because we've already said you're rolling for each of the contestants, and that includes you. So you've already you've already been reflexive in saying each of the contestants. So I think that should be including you. Yeah. So I think that's wrong. Um, so I'll say that again. Uh, to decide who eats the most eyeballs, roll one die five times for each of the contestants, including you. Adding up the totals for each. Okay, uh, roll one die five times. Okay, so we're going to have to write this down. Okay, so roll one die. Let's roll one die five times for each of the contestants. So we have to do it four times. Uh, yeah, so I mean five. Yeah, we have to do. We have to roll the dice. Uh, we have to roll the die. 20 times in total. Okay, so let's go. So 6 plus 5 is 11, plus 1 is 12, plus 1 is 13, plus 5 is uh, plus 5 is 18. So I get 18. So I shall put me 18. Okay, who's next? S E X Who's next? And that's a song by that's a, that's a song by L.A. Guns. Uh, I think it's called Sex Action. Anyway, and it, one of the lines is S.E.X. Who's next? Uh, uh, they're not known for their lyrical uh, mastery, but I do like the band anyway. Anyway, um, <clears throat> um, enough of that. Right, so Barbarian is next. So let's roll the die five times again. Six plus two is eight. Plus five is thirteen. Plus three is sixteen. Plus six is twenty-two. So the barbar uh, the barbarian gets twenty-two. Twenty-two. Lovely. Okay, who's next? S E X. Who's next? Caveman. All right. So uh, four plus two is six. Plus one is seven. Plus three is ten. Yeah, one more. Plus six is sixteen. So the caveman gets sixteen. So he's quite unlucky or unskilled at eating eyeballs, uh, sheep's eyeballs. Okay, who's next? We have the troglodyte. He's probably going to win, isn't he? But it's just random. Okay, he gets a four, then a three. That's a seven. That's a five. That's a twelve. It's a four. That's a sixteen, and a one. That's a seventeen. So troglodyte seventeen. That's that, right? Uh, get rid of the buzzing. There we go. Don't know why that works. Always does. Okay. If there is a tie for the highest score, roll the die again between the joint winners until a clear winner is found. If you win the competition, turn to 179. If the if the barbarian either wins the competition or eats more eyeballs than you, turn to 128. If you don't win. Uh, the competition, but managed to eat more eyeballs than the barbarian. Turn to 351. Uh, so lost to the barbarian, so we have to go to 351. And the barbarian wins, actually, didn't he? Yep, he got 22. Um, while the trophy is being handed to the winner. You turn to the barbarian and ask him to pay up on his be What? Wait a minute, I've done the wrong one. Sorry about this. I can't remember. Where was I? Was it 320? Oh, oh here it is. Good, that was lucky. Nice. E easy to find, actually, that. Oh, yeah, he's e oh, I did the wrong one. If the barbarian either wins the competition or eats more eyeballs than you, turn to 128. Yeah, I should have gone to 128. I, I apologise for that. I'm being really stupid today. I can't read. All right. Uh, the troglodyte hands the barbarian a small trophy. It is a bust of Zagor. The barbarian then turns to you and holds out his hand. You give him a golden object, as you deem it unwise to refuse. Um, remove the gold article from your equipment list. Although you are bloated, the eyeballs are still a source of nutrition. At one point, your stamina. Oh, okay. That's quite good. Let's put that up to 20, then. That's quite good. Uh, we have to get rid of one of our gold pieces, so I'll put this down to to four. So now we're on plus four. I have to put plus four because that's gold that, uh, that isn't uh, that aren't Zagors. So we've given him a gold piece. That's a gold item, isn't it? 
Um, although, do we have something else that's gold? A gold tip? No, I don't want to give him that. Gold jet? No, I don't want to give him that either. Gold ring? No, I don't want to give him that either. Blimey. Um, blimey. Uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the gold piece will do just fine. Bugger him. Right, anyway, part of my language. Okay, um, although you are bloated. Uh, yeah, um, after drinking a mug of water, you make your excuses and leave the room, turning right into the tunnel, turn to 304. Okay, uh, unfortunately, in, unfortunately, um, in my notes, you wouldn't believe this, but I have written down that uh, that we have to win this competition, because if we don't win, we can't complete the game. So I'm going to have to do this again. Uh, I apologise for this. It's, it's ridic What a ridiculous thing. What a ridiculous thing. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put my stamina back down to 19 and start that competition again. I, I have to win it, otherwise I can't complete it, because the, uh, the only way to complete the game is we have to get an item um, from winning... Uh, this competition, which is ridiculous because it means that whenever we do this book, we have only a 25% chance of actually completing the book, however well we're doing up to this point. We have to do this competition and we have to win it. There's no other way to do it. So I'll get rid of the fact that I've given a gold piece away. Oh, unbelievable. Anyway, so let's do that competition again, shall we? A absolutely stupid. What a ridiculous... Uh, what an absolutely ridiculous game mechanic that is. Uh, I just can't get over that. But that's that's the name of the game. This is why this is a difficult book. So every time you do this book, you have to do this, and you only get a, a certain... You only get 25%... Because it, it's, it's just a dice roll. You only get 25% chance of winning this, because the Barbarian could win, the Caveman could win, the Troglodyte win. And we have to win. We have no choice but to win to get this item. So I have to do this again, unless I restart the book, which I'm not going to do, because it's stupid. So yeah, let's just do this again. It's just, it's just luck. Okay, so let's do this again. Okay, so roll for me. I get a three, a four, one. No, I've lost again. No, I'm not going to win this. Let's just start again. It's just ridiculous. I have to win this. Okay. No, let's start again. Okay, four, six, ten, eleven, seventeen. 20. Okay, that might do. Let's just put down that I get a 20. Let's keep our old score there for posterity. Okay, Barbarian now. He gets a 4, a 1, that's 5, 8, 12, 16. Okay, Barbarian gets 16 this time. You know, I wrote down in my notes that we have to win this. Okay, uh, next is the Caveman. He gets a 6. A 4, that's 10. A 2, that's 12. A 3, uh, that's 15. And a 2, that's 17. Okay, just a troglodyte now. We've beaten everyone but the troglodyte. Okay, troglodyte gets a 4. A 4, that's 8. A 6, that's 14. <sighs> no, we've lost again because he's already on 20, the little git. I mean, what a stupid gameplay mechanic to make it to make it reliant on winning this stupid game. That's just luck. There's no skill involved whatsoever. I mean, I, um, I mean, you're not even using your skill points or anything or luck or anything. It's you're purely using dice rolls. Absolutely ridiculous. All right, so let's start again. You obviously would have got. Let's just say you got 22 for that one. You definitely got more than me because he was on 20 on his fourth roll. All right, again. No, I don't need more than a one. Let's start again. Four. No, need more than that. Start again. Start again. Start again. Okay, six. Four, that's ten. Six, that's sixteen. Three, that's nineteen. One, that's twenty. Okay, we get twenty again. Alright, what does the barbarian get this time? He gets a four, a five, eight, fourteen. 19. I just beat him, so he's on 19 now. Okay, caveman. He gets a 3, a 2, that's 5, 6, 10, 
15. He gets 15. Caveman gets 15. Okay, what does the old troglodyte get? He gets a 3, a 2 that's 5, 10, 11, yeah, and finally 17. So I finally win after the umpteenth attempt. Stupid, that's how many attempts it would have taken me, in theory, if I'd done this book. I mean, let's pretend that I've started the book again, got into the exact point that I'm at, and then I managed to get up to this game again, and I've done that, that sort of turn of events about 10 times now I've done it what a stupid gameplay mechanic absolutely ridiculous that's that's the worst gameplay mechanic I've ever I've ever known in one of these books so far awful absolutely awful anyway so we quote unquote won the competition it's not buzzing that's a relief all right now yeah we won the competition if you win the competition turn to 179 yeah, yeah and you'll see why we need to win the competition because we get a special item uh, the troglodyte hands you a small trophy. It is a bronze bust of Zagor. You pretend to be grateful. Although you are bloated and revolted at having to eat all those eyeballs, they are still a source of nutrition. Um, regain one stamina point. Okay, so let's write that down. So we have the bronze bust of Zagor. I just can't get over it. That's ridiculous. All right, so we've got our stamina back to 20 again. Cause, yeah, because of the... Uh, because of the uh, the eyeball eating. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, regain one stamina point. You turn to the barbarian and remind him of the bet. He grunts and slaps a cloth purse into your hand. You open it and find in it a large tooth made of gold. It has the number 27 stamped on it. Add one luck point. Okay, we don't need the luck point, but we have the gold tooth with 27. Let's make a new line. Okay. Yeah, so we have to win the competition, which is annoying. I think we can actually just beat the barbarian, but uh, uh, so really, we if we just the chance of just beating the barbarian is well, there are four different out well, there are several different outcomes. We can either well, it's fifty fifty, isn't it? We can either beat the barbarian or not beat him. So it's 50-50 whether we do. So it's 50-50 whether we uh it's 50-50 whether we actually win that. So it's 50-50 whether we actually can actually. But if I think if you do win against the barbarian, I think if you do beat the barbarian, you still have to fight him and he's really difficult or something like that and you have to fight him because he doesn't give up the he, um, he doesn't he doesn't give up his gold tooth that easily. So you know, it's 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 a difficult situation. Anyway, after drinking a mug of water, you make your excuses and leave the room, turning right into the tunnel. Turn to 304. I feel, um, I feel sorry for the sheep, uh, to be honest. Okay, the tunnel seems to be never-ending, but finally you arrive at a T-junction. If you want to go to the left, turn to 109. If you prefer to go to, if you prefer to go right, turn to 349. We're going to go right, turn to 349. Ridiculous gameplay mechanic there. Completely luck based. Yeah, and it isn't even as if you're using your luck points or using your skill points. I mean, at least sort of roll a, a die and add it to your skill or something like that. Anything to make it slightly less random. Anyway, you walk along the tunnel, following it round a long left, a long left hand bend until you come to a door in the right hand wall. Listening intently, you hear what sounds like somebody chopping wood. If you want to open the door, turn to 194. If you would rather walk on, turn to 151. We're going to open the door, so turn to 194. Here we go. The door handle turns and you walk in on a sight to chill the blood. A fearsome looking warrior practicing his sword play on a human shaped block of wood that is suspended from the ceiling. Splinters of wood fly in all directions as the warrior's heavy two-handed sword crunches into the wooden dummy. Uh, uh, the, warrior, uh, the warrior is wearing thick metal armour with spiked shoulders. His helmet is horned and covered with demonic symbols. There is no mistaking a Chaos Warrior. On seeing you, the warrior raises his sword and lets out a war cry. Chaos Warrior, skill 10, stamina 10. If you win, turn to 356. And there he is. A lovely fellow. He's got a skull on his knee. Why does he have a skull on his knee? It is a, look, it is a skull, definitely. 
Okay, so Chaos Warrior, skill 10, stamina 10. Let's do this. Skill 10, stamina 10. Okay, as usual, we'll roll for him first. Okay, he gets an 8, that's 18. I get a 4, that's 16. So 18 to 16, he wins the first one. Yeah, 16, sorry. Okay, so he takes first blood. 18, here we go. Okay, next. <clears throat> okay, he gets a 7, that's 17. I get a 7, that's 19. So 17 to 19. That means I win. As I said, if, if I lose anything, I just have to restart and just... Uh, um, and just pretend like it never happens because these books are luck based a lot of them it's not fair and i can't be bothered to do the whole book again just because of a dice roll that could happen again so um so if i lose against any if i lose a battle or if i lose something as stupid as that eyeball eating contest i just have to start again and just pretend it never happened really anyway so that's he's that's done he's down to eight now okay next one okay he gets a 10 that's 20 i get a five that's 17 so 20 to 17 that means he beats me again. Down to 16 now. I have no provisions, remember? Which is annoying. Right, okay. Okay, he gets a 7 at 17. I get a 5 at 17. So, um, no overall damage. Because we both had the same one. Clang as the swords meet, and no one is hurt. Okay, um, he gets a 7 at 17. I get an 8. That's 20, so 17 to 20. He likes his 17s, doesn't he? He's got down to 6 now, Mr. Chaos Warrior. Okay, he gets a 7, that's 17, surprise, surprise. And I get a 9, that's 21, so 17 to 21. That's good. I mean, does he like playing Blackjack or Pontoon or 21, whatever you want to call it? Okay. Um, Whatever the French call it, Vang... Um, um, Vang, uh, Vang Etun, or whatever they say. Anyway, for 21. Uh, 10, that's 20 for him. That's 9, that's 21 for me. Blimey, this is close. So 20 to 21. I win again, that's 2. Just win, though. This should be like a thing, like if you beat them by 6 points or something, you get to take more damage off, or something like that. So he gets a 9, that's uh, 19. I get an 8, that's 20. Blimey, this is close. So 19 to 20, and he's dead. Good. Brilliant, and that's the end of Mr. Chaos Warrior. Goodbye. That's that, and uh, I'm down to 16 stamina. Fantastic. Let's get rid of the buzzing, and we're back in play. Okay, so if you win, turn to 356. It was our choice to come in here, though. We didn't have to fight this person. Um, you reason that the room is the living quarters of the Chaos, is the living quarters of the Chaos Warrior. There is a straw-covered bed in one corner, a table with a half-eaten bowl of gruel in another corner, and a box of assorted objects on a wall shelf. Uh, numerous weapons are standing in a rack propped against one of the walls. Will you take a look at the box, turn to 24, take a look at the weapons, turn to 206, leave the room and walk on up the tunnel, turn to 156. Okay, we're going to um, we're going to take a look at the box, turn to 24. Now, the box contains bits and pieces that the Chaos Warrior must have collected over the years. Among the items you find a rat skull, um, a copper bracelet, three gold pieces, two silver pieces, a page from a tiny book, a horseshoe, a calling horn, and a silver, pen, a silver pendant on a beaded cord. You put them all into your backpack except the page from the book. The copper bracelet and the sil except the page from the book, the copper bracelet and the silver pendant. Okay, so... So, uh, three gold pieces, two silver pieces, let's write this down, so, so now we have plus eight, whoops, wrong one, press shift by accident, uh, I'm going to need that for the plus, plus eight, um, I'll just put silver, how much silver do we have? Uh, two silver pieces, let's put that down, two, 
and let's see, got a rat skull. Might as well keep that. Why we need a rat skull? I don't know. Um, horseshoe, a calling horn. Uh, shoe, not shoe. Calling horn. Brilliant. And then, what else do we have? Silver pendant and a beaded cord. The beaded, let's put the beaded cord down as well. Just another thing. Right. Lots of stuff here. Here we have room riddle. Uh, so, everything but silver pendant, tiny uh, copper bracelet, and page from a tiny book. Yep, good. Okay, um... Uh, now, uh, will you now read the page from the book, turn to 322, put the copper bracelet on your wrist, turn to 62, hang the pendant around your neck, turn to 105, put the bracelet and the pendant in your backpack, turn to 213, take a look at the weapons if you have not done so already, turn to 206, leave the room and walk on up the tunnel, turn to 151. Okay, we are going to... Um, what are we going to do? We are going to read the page from the book, th uh, 322. Uh, the text on the page is too small to read. If you have a magnifying glass, turn to 244. If you don't have a magnifying glass, will you now put the copper bracelet on your wrist, turn to 62, hang the pendant round your neck, turn to 105, Put the bracelet and pendant in your backpack, turn to 313. Uh, take a look at the weapons if you have not done so. If you have not already done so, turn to 206. Leave the room and walk on up the tunnel, turn to 151. We have a magnifying glass, so we're going to turn to 244. There is only half a sentence on the page. It reads, numbered 94 and destroys an air elemental of chaos. You memorise the words and decide what next to do. Okay, let's write that down. Numbered, whoops. Numbered 94 and destroys an air elemental of chaos. There we go. Uh, you memorise the words and decide what to do. Uh, what next to do. Will you put the copper bracelet on your wrist, turn to 62, hang the pendant round your neck, turn to 105, put the bracelet and pendant in your backpack, turn to 313, take a look at the weapons if you have not already done so, turn to 206, leave the room and walk on up the tunnel, turn to 151. Um, we're going to put the copper bracelet on our wrists, so turn to 62. Now the copper bracelet is a magic healing band. Um, your wounds are healed, and a sudden feeling of strength surges through your body. Regain four stamina points. If you want to hang the pendant round your neck, turn to 105. Otherwise, if, you're not, if you've not done so already, you may take a look at the weapons, turn to 206, or leave the room and walk up further up the tunnel, uh, further up the tunnel, turn to 151. I guess regain those four stamina points and put down it. We have a copper bracelet. Four stamina points. goes up to 20 again. Good. That's all the damage that annoying chaos warrior did. Okay, so um, we're now going to take a look at the weapons. So turn to 206. Now the weapons are all fairly ordinary and are probably those taken from the victims of the Chaos Warrior. Uh, there is a leather whip which you decide to take. Okay. Leather boys with electric toys. That's a uh, a song by Pretty Boy Floyd, and another band that I like. Uh, I've actually put Leather Boys as well, I wrote that down. Anyway, Leather Whip, <laughs> Leather Boys. Yeah, Leather. The, the album is called Leather Boys with Electric Toys. It's, it's one of those glam albums, and they're sort of like, for some reason they, they decide, uh, a bit like Poison, that they want to dress up like sort of transvestites, and the album was called Leather Boys with Electric Toys, and one of the songs was called Leather Boys. That's not the best song on the album, uh, best song in the album, in my opinion, is 48 Hours. But, uh, but yeah, that's a that's just a thing. Anyway, um, anyway, we now have actually wrote down Leather Boy. I <laughs> uh, can't get over that. Right. Um, okay, so we now have a Leather Whip. 
Um, will you now leave the room and walk on up the tunnel, turn to 151, or if you have not done so already, will you now take a look at the contents of the box, turn to 24? We're going to leave the room and walk on up the tunnel, so let's do that. 151. You arrive at the wooden door in the left-hand wall. Listening at the door, you hear the sound of feet shuffling slowly across the stone floor. If you want to open the door, turn to 60. If you would rather walk on, turn to 32. Uh, we're going to open the door, so turn to 60. Um, opening the door, you see a hunched, pockmarked creature wearing tattered grey rags and staggering under the weight of a dragon skull which it is carrying across a filthy room. One of the teeth in the dragon's jaw sparkles. It could be made of gold. Or made from gold. I think I prefer from, made from, rather than made of. Um, it could be made from gold. There is a large wooden crate at the back of the room, filled with straw, towards which the creature is walking. If you want to attack this creature, turn to 212. If you would rather close the door and walk further up the tunnel, turn to 32. Let's have a look at this. There he is. Oh dear, looks, looks like a bit of a leper. Actually, most lef um, lepers, rather, apparently I read, I can't remember where I read this, actually, in one of my books, I think, most lepers, you know, in, in the Bible, it used, to talk about, it used to talk about lepers and things like that in, in ancient time. Um, yeah, apparently most lepers didn't actually have leprosy. It was actually syphilis, apparently, because uh, the symptoms are actually quite similar. Well, early symptoms. Uh, syphilis eventually makes you go mad, but the early, the early symptoms of sort of like um, uh, sort of flesh wounds and sores all over your body and fingers dropping off. That's early symptoms of uh, some of the early symptoms of syphilis. Anyway, he looks like a bit of a leper. Uh, uh, syphilis or not. Anyway, if you'd rather, in, in, anyway, if you want to attack this creature, turn to 212. If you'd rather close the door and walk further up the tunnel, turn to 32. We are going to attack the creature, turn to 212. The creature is a yeah, he has plague. Or something. Uh, he has something. The creature is a plague bearer, and although it is not strong, a single touch of its hand up on your skin will turn you too into a plague bearer to live forever in a twilight world of servitude. Ooh. Plague bearer, skill 6, stamina 4. If you lose even a single attack round, you will uh, you will become a plague bearer and your adventure will be over. If you win, turn to 241. Okay, so we have to win this. So skill 6, uh, stamina 4, is it, where was it? Yeah. Okay, so plague bearer. We have to win this, otherwise we're screwed. <laughs> oh, well, we have to win this without getting getting hurt. Plague bear. I'm not sure that is the definition of plague. Plague is is a black there. I, I mean the proper definition the proper definition of plague is either, is either bubonic plague or pneumonic plague and that's the one uh, the black death they had in the middle ages. Um uh, for which, you know, there isn't a cure. There's there's a vaccine, I think. But well there is a cure but uh, not for the uh, antibiotic resistant one. <laughs> There's no cure for that one. Anyway, plague bearer. But yeah, there is a cure if you get if you get the normal plague, which isn't antibiotic resistant, and uh, you just get an antibiotics. Uh, really powerful antibiotics, but it's a cure nonetheless. Anyway, six four. Enough of that. All right, so we're going to have to do this without getting hurt. Right. Okay. He gets a two. That's six plus eight. Which is, which is 8, right? and I get 6, which is 18. So 8 to 18, I win, good. That means he's down to 2. Okay, he gets a 3, that's 9. I get a 7, that's 19. So, 9 to 19. And that's the end of that chapter. He's dead, good, without getting... I didn't get hurt, either. it's a bit easy, but, you know, if you have low skill, that might be a little bit tricky. Okay, so that's the end of Mr. Plague Bearer. Yep, go away. That annoying buzz, um, buzzing. I uh, nearly said buzzard there, but uh, annoying buzzing. Anyway, um, so we won that. So I turned to 241. You prize the gold tooth out of the dragon's jaw and inspect it closely. It is plain and has no markings. You put it in your pocket and inspect the dirty room. Um... Let's take the, the gold tooth, gold dragon's tooth. Mm. 
Gold Dragon's Tooth. No markings. Right so okay, um Against one wall stands a small table on which there is a human skull with a candle burning on top of it. You notice that the top of the skull has been cut through. If you wish to lift the top of the skull, turn to 165. If you'd rather leave this room and turn left into the tunnel, turn to 32. We're going to lift the top of the skull, so turn to 165. There are two small objects inside the skull. One is a tiny dragon's head carved out of bone, no bigger than a button, and the other is a page from a tiny book. If you wish to take the dragon's head, turn to 73. If you wish to read the page, turn to 133. If you would rather leave everything where it is, exit the room and turn left in the, into the tunnel, turn to 32. Um, we're going to read the page, 133. The text on the glass on the page is too small to read. If you have a magnifying glass, turn to 81. If you do not have a magnifying glass, you may, you may either take the dragon's head, turn to, turn to 73, or leave the room and turn left into the tunnel, turn to 32. We do have a magnifying glass, like always, so we're going to page of rather paragraph 81. What's going on? There is a, there's just a single sentence on the page. It reads, the fire elemental of light is numbered th uh, 315 and destroys an earth elemental of chaos. Okay. The fire elemental of uh, light is numbered what? Is numbered uh, 315 and destroys an earth elemental chaos. Right. Is numbered 315. 315 and destroys the earth. Elemental of Chaos. Yeah. Lovely. You memorize these words and, and decide what to do next. If you want to take the dragon's head, turn to 73. If you'd rather leave the room as it is and turn left into the tunnel, turn to 32. Um, we are going to take the dragon's head. So turn to 73. If your current luck score is 9 or above, turn to 167. If it is 8 or less, turn to 320. It is definitely um, 8 or um, 9 or above. It's 11 at the moment. I don't think I like that uh, if it is 8 or less. It should be 8 or fewer because luck points are discrete. And that's discrete spelled D-I-S-C-R-E-T-E, -E, which means you can't have 8.5 luck it's either it's it's a whole number which means we have to have fewer it's a fixed number so it's eight or fewer luck points we have eight if we have eight or fewer luck points if it's eight or less and that implies that we can have uh, 6.923 luck which is impossible there's a fixed number of luck points we can have and if we have eight or fewer luck points then we turn to 320 so that should be eight or it should be eight or fewer. Anyway, turn to th uh, 320. I mean, turn to 167 because we have 11 luck points. Oh, it's so good uh, being a pedant and going around, uh, going around correcting people's grammar. Anyway, the object in your hand is... Uh, I mean, I should be a proofreader, shouldn't I? Uh, the object in your hand is the original luck charm. It was made by the wizard Probabus who held s strange beliefs as to what things in the universe were important and what were unimportant. Um, he held that luck was the all-important force and that some people and creatures were born with it. He did not believe that good or bad luck happened to people as a result of random occurrences. Um, Probabus liked lucky people and disliked unlucky ones, condemning them as worthless if they had not received their measure of luck. You are a lucky person, and Probabus wants you to be rewarded for possessing that quality. Uh, the lucky charm detects your high luck factor and rewards you. Restore either your skill or your stamina back to its initial score. You put the lucky charm back inside the skull and leave the room, turning left into the tunnel. Turn to 32. Okay, so we don't take the lucky charm with us, but we put our stamina back to the top. So it's nice. Our skill is already at the top. Good. Lovely. Lovely. 
Okay, um, we're now going to leave and uh, leave the room and turn left into the tunnel, turn to 32. And this, I'm afraid, is where we end the video. You soon arrive at another door, this time in the right-hand wall of the tunnel. If you want to open the door, turn to 144. If you'd rather walk on, turn to 97. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to decide whether to open the door, turn to 144, or walk on and turn to 97. So uh, we're on paragraph 32. I'll write that down. Uh, so then, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed my rambling on about various things such as um, grammar mistakes, um, math system games, uh, some of my favourite, uh, well, not favourite albums, but some albums that I that I listen to sometimes. Um, Pretty Boy Floyd being one of them. Uh, and uh, and of course uh, uh, the LA guns as well. You know, yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this video, and I hope you can join me for the next one. Thanks again, and goodbye.